Okay, so reviewing for a stats test. Uh, so what better than a bunch of data? I'm going to give you some data. You're going to type it into list one, and I want you to answer a bunch of questions about it. Okay? 26, 27, 28, 28, 29, 30. Now, before you even type that into the calculator, you should be able to make one of these for it. That is called the five number summary. The min, the max, hopefully you know what that spot and that spot are called. This one's the middle one, therefore the median. And you should not need a calculator. So try this without the calc first. Some of you typing already, don't type. Put it in the calculator in a minute. But first, figure out the five number summary and then check it with the calculator. Here's two things I wouldn't expect you to do by hand. The average, I know you could, but the calculator will be better for finding the average, just in case it's not exactly 28. And this thing, who remembers that symbol? It's the what, what? Standard deviation, good. Those two the calculator will be handy for. So try to do it without the calculator, then check it with the calculator under one var stats. If you're stuck on something calculator-wise, please ask the kid next to you. Maybe you're just in a weird mode or something. I'll pause for a minute while you try that one and I get the VR set up. But the delay there, but we had to get the uh, VR thing going. And I think we're already ready for the next person. Okay. So, what did you come up with without a calculator? I hope you're smart enough to know that this is the min, that this is the max that this is the median, and that this would be the middle of the lower half, which would be 27. Get how I got that, 27? Paying attention? This, middle of the upper half, 29. See, I didn't even need a calculator for that one, but in the real world, the numbers are usually much more messy, and the calculator's much better at finding out Q1 and Q3. All right, so here's a typical test question. What is the interquartile range? Compared to the range. Hmm. Figure out what the range is. Figure out what the interquartile range is. Okay. So you should have said that the range was 30 minus 26. The range was 4. Raise your hand if you knew the range was 4. The interquartile range. What minus what? You can do it. IQR. Yes. What is 29 minus 27? 2. All right. Good. Next question you could be asked is, what percent of the data is between 27 and 29? Yeah. This is 50% of the data is going to be from here to here. The middle 50. All right. Next. What percent of the data is above 29? 25% of the data would be between here and here. Very good. All right, next. The average X. What did you get, sir? Can anybody verify that X with the bar was 28? Okay, good. And then what is the other little funky symbol there? What's that called? Do you remember? This thing. G. That's the S. D. You remember what this stands for? Yes, it's those things, how far apart they are. The standard, there we go, standard deviation. And what was it in this case? 1.29. All right, so then, what if you go one standard deviation above normal? There's a z-score for that. Do you guys remember what z-score is? All right, you're about to. Here is a problem where it's a z-score question. You are in this data, and you personally have a 27 and a half, okay? We don't even know what this could be, like uh, how tall you are in centimeters, although that'd be really short, uh, or it could be, anyway, we don't know what the data is, but you have a 27 and a half. What's your Z-score? You know the average, you know the standard deviation. If you had a 27.5, Figure out your z-score. I'm going to pause for a second while you try that one. Okay. So here's what we have. 
27.5 is your score. You subtract off the average. The average in this case was 28. And then you divide by the standard deviation, which is 1.29. I don't happen to have 0.5 divided by 1.29 memorized. What did it come out to be? Yes. Negative 0.39. Now, was that a good score? Well, it kind of depends. If this is like cholesterol where you don't want a high number, maybe that's good. Will you agree that this person is below average a little bit? What if it had been a negative one z-score? What would that mean? One standard deviation below average. All right, now we're going to do the classic use of a z-score, and that's to compare two people. This time, what I think is interesting is they're both taking a score out of 40, but one's a bio test, and Bob takes the bio test, and Sally takes the science test. Let's make it science. And they're both out of 40. And Bob takes the bio and gets a 29 out of 40. Sally gets a 32 out of 40. Can you tell for sure that Sally did better? No, because it depends on how other people did. So what would need data would you need to know? The average and the standard deviation. Okay, so here's the average. The average of this test, we're going to say, was a 31 with a standard deviation of 4. The average on this test is going to be a 33 with a standard deviation of 1. Would you please tell me, in the end, who did better here? Don't say the answer yet. Find the z-score for both, and that'll be your proof that whoever did better than the other. I'll, this is a positive thing. Basically, higher points is a good thing on a test, so we'll pause for a second while we figure that one out. All right. Z-score for Bob. Let's go to the back. You, sir. Negative 0.5. Just generally, did he do well or not? Not great, because was he below or above average? Below average, how far below average? Half a standard, Half a standard deviation. deviation. Okay, very good. Then Sally's score. What did you get, CV? A little louder. Negative 1.0. What does that mean? One standard deviation. What? Uh, Caitlin, you're going to be next. Oh, wait, I guess he went that way. That's fine. That's fine. All right. Next up, this... If I'm comparing these two, what score did Sally need? Completely different question now. If she were going to get in the 55th percentile, do you remember what thing that was? Here's some options. There's inverse normal. There's CDF. There's two variable stats. Those are all things we haven't talked about. One of them is what you should do right now. What should Sally get in order to get 55th percentile, which would be a little above the middle? All right, I'm going to pause the video for a second here. So we were doing, was it Sally or Bob? Sally. And Sally needed a 55%. Did you know that was the inverse normal? That's what we were doing is inverse normal. And on inverse normal, you got to enter in a few things. You got to enter in three things. You got to enter in what the average score was and what percent you want. So we started with 0.55 and then the average score and then standard deviation. Is that what you put in? Excellent. What did you get out, sir? Very good. A 33 would not quite be good enough, but a 34 would be what you'd need to get top 55th percentile. Did my 32 for Sally, did that get her a high enough score to get 55th percentile? No. All right. Now what if we wanted to go the other way around? Now we're going to give you 
a score range and say what percentage of people were in that score range. But first, question about this one. Okay, if you wanted top 5%, that's a very good question. Top 5%, you would have put 0.95. I think you just caught me making a mistake. I think you might be right. How about this? Let's do 0.95 to find top 5%. Go ahead and do that. Would you please just redo the question if with a top 5%, AKA 95. So what did I say before? I said 55th percentile, 55th percentile would be top 45%. So I don't know which I said. If I said 55th percentile, or if I said top 55%, because that's two different things. Do you get what I'm saying? I think I said 55th percentile, but if I said top 55th percentile, that would have been wrong. But anyway, 55th percentile, you can do like I just did. So this answer was right. I might have said it wrong. Back to the 95th percentile, which would be the same as top 5%. Hey, e, what did you get for that one? Um, so you'd need a 35. Very nice. Okay. Any questions on that one? Anybody can verify that answer? Just making sure. Okay, good. All right. Then, a new question, changing the rules. Now I'm going to say, I want to know what percent of kids scored between a 31 and a 34. That's going to be a lot of the kids. A lot of kids scored between 31 and 34. You know how I know? Because that's right around the average where a lot of them cluster up. What percent of kids are between 31 and 34? I'll pause for a second while you try that one. Okay. Fix some more VR problems there. You ready? You should have done normal what? CDF. And the normal CDF on this thing asks you for a bunch of things. The low end, the high end, uh, and the average, and the standard deviation. And then when you put in all of that, What did you get, Mr. H? Got this one done yet or not? I didn't, I'm not trying to catch you napping. I thought you'd have it. Can anybody verify that? <laughs> okay, you, you had it and you already lost it. I understand. Okay. 80, 81? Okay. Somebody must have this up on their iPad. Oh, slash on your calculator still. What do you get? 82%. Can anybody verify 82%? Yay. 82% of the people would be in there. Why are they all clustered around that? Because that's the average, and the standard deviation was very small, which means most people are right around that average. Does that make sense? Okay. Next, two variable stats. So just to keep you from having to enter this twice, we're going to leave this in your L1 list. Remember these numbers? Now we're going to make an L2 list to go with it. And it'll be decreasing like this, 48, 40, ah, 47, 46, 45, 44, 43. I'm hoping that after you enter this, you will be able to find for me the average point. That would be the spot in the data, which is the average X and the average Y. You would get that under two VAR stats. And once you find the average point, you should be pretty close to being able to find the linear regression. And that linear regression looks kind of like this. It's totally not going to be a 2, and it's totally not going to be a 28. But these two numbers here, once you do a linear regression with list one and list two, 
You should be able to pull that up on your calculator. I'll pause for a second. Maybe give that one a try. By now, you should have run a linear regression. KH, did you? Did you know how to do the lin reg? And what did you get? If not, I can come back to you. I'll come back to you on a different question. KU, did you do a linear regression yet? Oh, I don't need an R value, but if you were going to get the R's, by the way, you set the diagnostics to on. Some of you can do that in your mode. Some of you need to do it under the catalog menu to get your R value. Okay, but back to, let's not worry about the R value. Can you tell me what the A and the B value, I wish it was called M and the Y intercept. You know, Y equals MX plus B, but they call it Y equals AX plus B. So what's your A value, KU? Uh, negative 1.5. Plus, what's the Y intercept? 51. Can anybody verify those numbers? Okay, awesome. Then, here's my question. Given that that's supposed to be the linear regression, what point should work in there? The mean point, the average point. Do you remember the mean point? You remember how to find that? Under two variable stats, under two variable stats, you can find the average x and the average y. You should do that and see if your mean point works in your linear regression. It should. Otherwise, you didn't do it right. And when I say works, that means if this comes out to like 86 and this comes out to like 21, when you put it all in, it should equal each other. Figure out your mean point, stick it in, make sure it works. Other than the fact it's rounded a little bit. If it's only off a titch, it's probably because of rounding. Okay. What was the mean point? There's two numbers for it. The average X is 28. Can you tell me the average Y? That's on that two variable stats thing. You want both. To get the average point, you've got to have the average X and the average Y. Can anybody verify 46? Okay. 45 point, oh, you're probably just a rounding issue then. 45.5, did you say? All right. So there we go. There's the average point. You know what should happen? When you put that in here, the X goes here and the Y goes here, it should work. This is one of the only points that will work in this equation. The other points should be close to that line, but not necessarily work. All right. All right. Now let's do some more analysis of big sets of data. So that's kind of like the simple stuff. All right, you need to put that video away. That's all neat, but I need your full attention right now. Okay. So if I give you a graph like this and I ask you to compare these data sets from their little picture, if this is class A and this is class B, which group did better? Let's say this is a test where higher scores are better. Which group did better on average? A. Why? Why do you think it's A? Okay, who's next? You're supposed to come and get the next person and get them. Okay, there you go. It's not group A. Group A did not do better. What group did better? Group B. Why? How can you prove it? They both had the same max score, but does just one kid mean that the group did better? No. So if you're judging that maybe this is like a tiny bit further over than this, that's not how you should judge. It's this big mass of people, the middle 50% of people, were significantly higher than this. That might have been like a 28, and these guys would have been like a 30. Do you get what I'm saying? The middle chunk that big group of people 50 percent of the people are in the box then most of your people in the b group did better than the a group all right one more question which would have a higher standard deviation a 
or B? A would have the higher standard deviation. Therefore, A is more spread apart. Okay, next, if I give you a data this way. Do you know on the linear regression underneath it, it has the little R equals? Is an R that's equal to 1 good? Yes, it's very strong, what, positive or negative correlation? Positive. What if it was negative 1? Strong negative correlation. How about negative 1.5? That's impossible. What's the strongest correlation you can get in the negative direction? Negative 1. So is a negative 0.7 a very realistic option? Yeah, because it's not often anything's perfect correlation. All right. So this one, if you had to estimate it, would you estimate this? Would you estimate this to have an R value closer to 0 0.2, 0 0.8, or negative 0.8? Don't say it. Write it down. R value 0 0.2, 0 0.8, negative 0.8. GB, what do you say? 0.8. Why didn't you choose negative 0.8? Because this one's going up as you read from left to right. You are correct. There were only two choices you could have picked, 0.2 or 0.8. And 0.8 is a lot closer to 1, and I'd say this is a, that, that's the best call. This is closer to a 0.8 than it is to a 0.2. Okay, next up. This linear regression. Is it possible? Yes or no? Is that possibly the right linear regression? Prove it. I'm seeing a bunch of heads shaking their heads no. Prove with at least one of the two numbers that this can't be right. What feels off to you? The slope. You're saying the slope of 4 seems what? Too big or too small? All right. Well, and how about this? Would you agree it would help if I drew a line of best fit that went something like that? Does it seem possible that this could be the mean point, the middle of all the points? That should be close anyway. It's kind of average between this and this. And it's kind of average between this and this. So that, yeah, that could be the mean point. And then the line of best fit goes through that. And do you get that my y-intercept on this is about what? What's the y-intercept in this one? The y-intercept's more like 10. So this one's y-intercept of 2? That's not possible. Okay, all right, so this was out because of that, for sure, and let's say it's 10. Now, is the slope possibly right? Well, here's how you can tell on the slope. I would pick a spot that's like from here to here on the line, and then say, how much rise and how much run do I have? How much rise? Well, from here to here is a rise of 10. How much run? Would you agree that's about 2? It's not perfect, but about 10 over 2. So that's 10 rise from here to here and 2 run. What's 10 over 2? 5. So 4x wasn't actually that far off on the slope. So that actually was a plausible slope. But the y-intercept wasn't feasible. All right, let's try another one like that and see if you process this one a little bit better. I'm going to change it up. This is numbering by 5s now. And this is numbering by 100s. And this is where the dots are. And this is what I'm saying. It seems like it could be the line of best fit. Possible or no way possible? 
prove it. What's one way? It's no way possible. So what intercept? Okay, what if I made the y-intercept uh, 220? Now, possible, not possible. Figure out what you think the slope would be. Take any two points on that line and figure out how much rise and how much run they have. I mean, pick ones that are nice. Like maybe you pick here and here because that's got a rise of about 100. You get those two points would have a rise of 100, but a run of about two notches, which is actually how far? 10. What is 100 divided by 10? Because it's rise over run. 100 divided by 10 is 10. So this was a little too small for a slope also. Should have been, I fed us at 8, 9, 10, 11, or 12, I think it had been fine. But this was way off. It was way too small of a slope. You're getting how to read the line of best fit. All right. Is this data closer to an R value of 0.2 or 0.9? What's it closer to? 0.9. It's pretty close to 1.0. 1.0 would be in a nice straight line. Do, 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 do. If you are interested in this kind of thing, I saw a perfect straight line going across the sky on a video. It was when Elon Musk's company just launched 60 satellites out into space out of the same rocket and it was pretty cool. The light, I'm pausing for a second here. Okay, so what if I said this? I think the mean point is about 15 comma 350. Do you think that's possible? The mean point, 15, comma, 350. So here's where 15, comma, 350 is. Right about there. Is that pretty much in the middle of the data? That's a feasible mean point. Okay. All right. We've covered pretty much uh, the topics that we had. Now it's up to you to study. How are you going to study? There is a review worksheet and a key for it. What I would do is do every problem of it. This is your last test. This is your, the last melon. You don't want to really be doing a retake. All right, at the same time, you're supposed to be studying for the finals. It would be much more efficient to be studying for the finals instead. So I would recommend studying tonight for this test. Okay? And how would you know if you're doing it right? All those review problems are specifically made to help you prepare for this test. So I would strongly recommend doing all of them. And if there's any that you're confused on or get wrong, you look them over really thoroughly. Tomorrow morning and the next morning are both mornings. You could get morning help. I'll be here, but not until mast time tomorrow. Be prepared to submit that worksheet. That worksheet is assigned. If you are in such a position as you have not missed any homework assignments, if you had missed it, it wouldn't be the end of the world. So that's all I have for the video for today.